This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, New Zealand's water has politicians arguing over who should pay for it and scientists worried about the decline in quality. The New Zealand Transport Agency has new technology to predict and control avalanches in Fiordland. And anyone wanting to make use of funding provided by the city's gigatown status needs to apply before funding closes. Kia good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. New Zealand's water is back in the headlines this week with politicians arguing over who should pay for it and scientists again pointing out that the quality is on the decline. We have two reports tonight and we hear from scientists in a moment, but firstly the chairperson of Irrigation New Zealand says farmers forced to pay a water tax would not then be able to afford to make water quality improvements on their properties. Nikki Hislop made the comments in Dunedin this morning at a meeting of irrigators. A breakfast meeting for the Chamber of Commerce was a buzz today with the hot button issue of water quality. A new policy by the Labour Party would expect water users to pay for it, meaning water bottling companies and farmers operating irrigation schemes would pay royalties. But speakers at the meeting considered the real discussion should be about water limits at catchment level. Chair of Irrigation New Zealand Nikki Hislop said farmers must farm within limits and minimise drainage issues. We're also talking about multi-purpose storage and that is, is not just about irrigation, that's backing up our city, cities and towns water supplies, it's about augmenting um, lowland streams in dry summers um, when they would otherwise go dry. There's, there's a whole lot more to it than just irrigation. Environmental groups and the opposition have accused National of playing fast and loose with definitions of swimmable rivers. Their plan for clean waterways promised to deliver by the year 2040. But there has been a sense of frustration around the pace of the rollout across the country. This came to the fore in the media this week after newly elected Labour leader Jacinda Ardern outlined the party's fresh water policy. Hislop addressed questions around Nick Smith's comments Labour's levy would cost farmers $600 billion. Water quality issues are not just in, in the 6% of, of farmland and throughout New Zealand. There's water quality issues in, in areas um, which are you know, traditionally wet areas, Southland, Waikato, um, towns, cities, and yet they're not going to contribute. Is that fair or reasonable? Hislop says regional council and not the farmer should continue managing costs. The programs in place are working but it will take some time to deal with legacy water issues. Irrigation New Zealand CEO Andrew Curtis says Labour's proposed water tax would affect every New Zealander with higher prices for such things as food, wine, beer and housing. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. Continuing on from that report, in Queenstown this week, scientists at the University of Otago Winter Symposium reminded their audience the rivers of Otago and Southland continue to be degraded. Topics included the rising demands of dairy farming in Southland and the challenges over water allocation for irrigation in Otago. Here's Mina Amso. The ad that displays New Zealand to the world as 100% pure was again under the microscope this week at the University of Otago's Winter Symposium. University lecturer Dr Sarah Mager signalling strongly the country's water quality is in trouble. Do you reckon that the overall quality of our rivers have been on the decline? And you said yes. Yes. When you try to put statistics through that, to try to get meaningful trends, uh, for some it shows no change, for others there's been a meaningful decline, uh, and for others there's been a slight improvement. And it depends what variable we're looking at, but also what catchment we're looking at. Uh, for our lowland rivers, there are some that have a meaningful decline. Dr. Mega's work includes half yearly trips around southern rivers, sampling variables like sediments and dissolved material to understand our water quality. She says rivers in alpine areas fed from mountains are still pristine. But as we move away from that, if we move away from those pristine alpine catchments, 
uh, we start to see the effects of anthropogenic land use change. Uh, and that's inevitable. As soon as we transform from grasslands to forest or to pasture to urban areas, we're going to see changes in the water quality that reflect the integrated effects of that transformation of land cover. She says the lower catchments are seeing a significant decline in key water quality indicators, especially those towards Invercargill, where dairy farming is being intensified beyond what she believes the land can cope with. Where we have moved from uh, into dairy, the byproduct of that, so the urea, manure, the cow pants, they're all quite nitrogen rich. And so they cycle that nitrogen through the land uh, and it moves very quickly because it's very soluble. So it moves very fast from animal waste into water waste. She sees the biggest challenge in central Otago is water allocation. For central Otago we don't have a lot of rain uh, and the amount of evaporation that occurs is uh, higher than the amount of rain that we get in some of those areas. And so for agricultural production, for livelihoods, uh, there's a long history of extracting water from those rivers for irrigation. Uh, the consequence of doing that is it reduces the amount of water in the river and that affects habitat. Uh, and so it's about figuring out how much we can keep in our rivers and how much we can divert to irrigation as well. In Otago, one of those challenging areas is the Pomahaka, which is a tributary into the Kletha. Uh, and the community is quite engaged with thinking about how they can create resilience in their farming techniques uh, to improve its water quality. Lakes Wakatipu, Wanaka and Hawia, she says, are still pristine. However, she says work needs to be done to measure the resilience of the lakes. Mina Amso, The South Today. The New Zealand Transport Agency has rolled out some new technology to predict and control avalanches in Fiordland. Specialised equipment was flown to some tricky spots earlier in the year. Sharon Rees reports. May through to November is avalanche season in Fiordland and to keep the Milford Road on State Highway 94 as safe and as open as possible, a special avalanche control team has employed some high-tech equipment. So that team is responsible um, for lots of things. There's a core group there that, that are uh, our avalanche forecast team and, and their job is to be looking at the forecast of the weather. Um, they're looking at the snow conditions uh, and they're also testing uh, and, and using cameras and other systems to, to see what's occurring up high in, the, in those um, zones where the snow builds up above the road. In May a new weather station was flown and erected on one of the more difficult sites above the Milford Road. The specialised condition monitoring equipment is based both at a road and mountain level and is monitored around the clock to maximise safety and minimise road closures. Getting from Tiana to Milford Sound is, is um, only really by road for the big numbers of people, you know, bus trips and things. So the only way you can have the road open all year round is to have an avalanche control program running behind the scenes that, that makes sure the road is open um, appropriately and closed when it needs to be. And if, if we have to, we try and manage uh, avalanches to to you know, maximise the time the road is open. Besides predicting avalanches, the programme also controls hazards by either not allowing traffic to stop inside the avalanche area or by closing the road and using controlled explosives to release avalanches before they occur naturally. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. A 28-year-old woman was lucky to get away with minor injuries after her car rolled on the southern motorway yesterday. Emergency services were called to the scene around 9.30 yesterday morning. It is thought the car hit the median barrier, flipping dramatically through the air before landing on its roof in the northbound lane. The lane was closed for about an hour and the driver was taken to Dunedin Hospital with minor injuries. For the past three years, Dunedin tech companies have been making use of funding provided by the city's Gigatown status. However, the funding period is coming to a close shortly, prompting the organisers to advise people thinking of applying to pull finger. Dunedin has been a giga city with giga speed internet available to most people since the city won the giga town title three years ago. The project is reaching the end of the initial phase and Chairman John Gallagher says it's time to look into the future. We are, we're well through the actual three year period uh, that was uh, the result of us winning the competition for giga town originally. So uh, by the end of this calendar year, we will have the majority of the 
uh, the value of the prize, if you like, uh, in the system. And uh, then we're moving into sort of phase two, which will be looking at what the digital strategy for the city will be in the future. As part of the Dunedin winning the Gigatown competition, Chorus gave $500,000 to assist the city's community groups to create initiatives using GigaSpeed and ultra-fast broadband technology. He says Dunedin people and tech companies have taken advantage of the increased connectivity with the wider world. You know, I, the, the figures continually are improving as people understand that the, you know, the access point is now past their uh, driveway and all they need to do is contact their normal provider for broadband and they will arrange to link you in. And the city still has the uh, very tangible benefit of a discounted price to the residents of Dunedin in terms of the price or the access to that uh, ultra-fast broadband. Gallagher says it's bringing both the world to Dunedin and taking Dunedin tech companies to the world. It's also given us a, an appreciation of the value of being a, a digitally savvy city and a city that um, can utilise the, the, the technology skills that we have, you know, the sort of the collective intellectual capacity that we have with so many entrepreneurial um, IT based people here and just the confidence that we can we can work uh, either with or compete with the best in the world and so it just it's given us a, an ability to uh, to take on the world and, and to do it uh, on our terms and I think that's an enormous positive for a city like this. He advises applications are now open for the leading organisations and charity groups seeking funding from the Giga City Community Fund for innovative community project ideas using gigabit technology. It's the last of five funding rounds where groups can apply for a maximum of $20,000 per project unless multiple organisations collaborate. Daryl Beza, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, a Port Chalmers dairy farm is back up and running with sales of its fresh milk and motor th enthusiasts will be burning rubber and losing tyres at the New Zealand Burnout Championships in Invercargill next month. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off. Possum, Merino Possum. Pure wools, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made. 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz from rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second-hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book-loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. 
Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Welcome back. A Port Chalmers dairy farm is back up and running with its sales of fresh milk. This comes after being closed down over a year ago when one cow tested positive for tuberculosis. Rudy Adrian has more. It's been a long emotional road for Port Chalmers farmer Meryl McNeil who was forced to book his beloved heifers for the slaughterhouse 14 months ago after one tested positive for TB. On learning of the cow's plight, volunteers stepped in supplying feed and helping set up an approved pasteurization process. They had a whole list of things they needed done and I didn't have the money to do everything in a hurry so it, it, it took a while that's all because we, we had to do we depended on a lot of volunteer help and things take time. McNeil says the customers are starting to come back and he is happy with the quality of the new milk he is producing. I can taste a tiny bit of cooked flavor, but not much. The texture, I think, is very similar. Same, same, nice cream, creamy milk. I don't. It's not bad. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. He said he was overjoyed to be back, and felt privileged to be able to continue after all looked so lost just over a year ago. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Motor enthusiasts will be burning rubber and losing tyres at the New Zealand Burnout Championships in Invercargill next month. A new burnout pad has been laid at Invercargill's Riverside Speedway in the hope it will produce the biggest burnouts the South has ever seen. Sharon Reese reports. A vehicle losing traction is rarely a welcome event, but at Riverside Speedway's latest edition, it's the more the merrier. A new burnout pad which has been laid at the Speedway track will be put to the test with the upcoming New Zealand Burnout Championship set to attract people from all over. We've spent about $16,000 in concrete in the last few weeks uh, expanding this pad. So it's, uh, it's a bigger, big, big event um, that's going to go off down here like it's gone viral already. And uh, there's uh, five rounds in New Zealand and four of them in the North Island and uh, just the one down here and this is, meets the requirements and measurements for the standard for that competition. Riverside Speedway Committee member Rob Mitchell says the new pad will see up to 100 skids for the competition. Depends how many people want to have, a, have two or three goes. Some people are happy with one go, other people just are chomping at the bit and want to have five or six goes. So if you get an average of a 30 car field you want everyone to have at least two skids plus a few extra, so it could be anywhere between 60 and 100 skids for the day, really. Last year's competition winner, Chris Daly of Tiana, was the first to christen the new pad, and Mitchell said he enjoyed it thoroughly. Mitchell says the 100-point system for the competition is simple. 10 points for instant smoke, 20 points for persistent smoke, 20 points for volume of smoke, 40 points for the driving, and 5 points for each tyre popped. The New Zealand Burnout Championship will be held on the 16th of September at Riverside Speedways. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. After the break on The South Today, Queenstown residents have a chance to make submissions on a new $60 million hotel proposed for the resort. Just seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi award winning Garrett. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. 
Please adopt a pet now. They will love you forever. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte, and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush, but the high-speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost feel as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grass seed, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn, your perfect all year round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. The University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tane. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here? No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tane. Fancy a little cuddle? Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes, some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season. This week's documentary is Kraftware, the robotic band from Düsseldorf. Wednesday 7.30, Friday 8.30. Welcome back. Queenstown residents have a chance to make submissions on a new $60 million hotel proposed for the resort. The Holiday Inn Express Hotel will have over 200 rooms and is the subject of a resource consent application to the Queenstown Lakes District Council. The public have 20 days from now to have their say. The hotel would be built at the corner of Stanley, Sydney and Melbourne Streets by Pro Investment Developments who plan to include on-site accommodation for permanent staff. Some of the youngest cast ever seen on a professional New Zealand stage are treading the boards at Fortune Theatre. Students from Kavanagh College and Bayfield High School are making their theatrical de debut in the musical Into the Woods. And as ro reporter Roselle Labone found out, the youngest cast member has a family connection. By day, Kavanagh College student Rose Pickard is your everyday 15-year-old. But by night, it's a different tale for this already seasoned performer. Incredible. It's such an amazing opportunity because people, these actors only started when they were 20 or so, so I've got a good five years ahead of them. Pickard is the youngest cast member of Fortune Theatre's production of Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods. She's playing the leading role of Red Riding Hood alongside much older talent. Pickard remembers how she felt when she found out she'd won the part. So I was at netball and then Dad got the phone call, hopped in the car, he surprised, he told me and then I started crying. Juggling schoolwork and some very complicated theatre music is no mean feat. And if that weren't enough pressure, her mum's decided to keep a close eye on her playing Jack's mother in the show, of Jack and the Beanstalk of course. So proud of you, her, Rose. <laughs> To do us on time is you to be your first musical. You couldn't pick a harder musical ever. There are definite challenges in staging a Sondheim musical, but managing director of Fortune Theatre Bob King has complete faith in his young charges. 
has, has been outstanding. It's great to see uh, such talent from such a young uh, emerging cast. Rose has been yeah. exceptional and a number of people have noted it. Picard is one of the recipients of Fortune's Emerging Artist Scholarships this year. Her next role is Louisa in a touring production of The Sound of Music. Sound of Music's going to be a picnic. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. New Zealand's water is back in the headlines this week with politicians arguing over who should pay for it and scientists again pointing out its quality is down the drain. The New Zealand Transport Agency has rolled out some new technology to predict and control avalanches in Fiordland after specialised equipment was flown in earlier this year. And the last round of Dunedin's gigabit funding for community groups and business is open, bringing the first phase of the city's gigabit status to a close. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Phil Somerville. Yes, hi. Picture first up, we were discussing before, I wonder if viewers know what it was. You were right on the ball, recognised it as an albatross, <laughs> and you joked about the fuzzy fluff. fluff. So yeah. we're going to call him Albert Tross. Yes, Albert <laughs> Tross, as an Einstein. Yep. Clever name, isn't it? So they're doing very well, and we've got a nice bright picture about that, a story about that. So a story uh, on a more serious note about the paedophile priest from Dunedin and where he is now and what's happened to him. And I uh, thought so jump to the opinion pages uh, tonight, mentioned Chris Trotter's interesting story about the Greens, Materia Ture's uh, mistake, a big mistake, and the Greens being more green than red as in socialist. Yes. And Gwyn Dyer is always very interesting talking about Trump and the Korean situation which is becoming quite alarming. Well it's escalating out of control with these like promising fire and brimstones yes. and things like yes. that. Mm -hmm. Certainly something to be watching with intrepidation I'd say. Thanks. Okay lovely. Well thank you for that Phil. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville. Southern view of Harakeke fluttering in the Otago Harbour breeze. Looking at the situation, a cool west to southwesterly airflow is spreading over southern districts today and will remain tomorrow. Airflow from the west will continue through the weekend with showers in the west and mostly fine weather in eastern parts. To the southern outlook, down south you can all expect a moderate westerly, some cloud and 10 degrees. To the central outlook, Alexandra and Queenstown can both expect light southwesterly, some cloud and 10 degrees. Tiana freshening westerlies, cloudy and 10 degrees. Wanaka light southwesterly, some cloud and 11 degrees. To the northern outlook, Omaru and Timaru light winds, mostly fine and you're both 12 degrees. Amarama and Twizel light southwesterly, some cloud and you're both 11 degrees. And here in Dunedin tonight, showers developing late tonight with freshening southwesterlies with an overnight low of 5 degrees. Showers clearing tomorrow morning but remaining mostly cloudy during the day with cool southwesterlies dying out. 12 and 5, and sunny periods and some cloud on Saturday with moderate milder northwesterly winds, 11 and 5. And in Invercargill tonight, showers with fresh southwesterlies with an overnight low of 7. Tomorrow showers clearing and sunny periods increasing with fresh cool southwesterlies decreasing 10 and 6. And mostly fine and sunny on Saturday with light westerly winds, 10 and 5 degrees. And that's our news for this Thursday. For the latest news from the southern re region, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. From the South Today team, ka kite ano, good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.